Welcome everybody out to Money Mastery Mastermind. This is the 11th of November 2015. Today's topic is about networking. So we're following the Money Mastery acronym, M-O-N-E-Y. M is for mindset, O is for opportunity, N is for networking, E is for entrepreneurship, and Y is for being yourself. So today we're talking about N, which is networking. I've got a dear friend of mine on the call. His name is Christian Busey. He's a successful actor, comedian, uh, writer, and director. He just landed a new deal in Hollywood for a million dollar budget for a movie that he's both writing and directing. He has over 110 million views on YouTube, and he's just an extremely successful individual, extremely funny. Uh, in Hollywood, they call him the next Chris Farley. So, Christian, thank you for being on the call. Thank you, Woody. So before we get started, I want to teach you guys some simple principles about networking and then ask Christian how these principles have influenced his career in Hollywood as well as on YouTube. So the first principle are the three uh, levels of influence. We've talked about this in the past, but it's extremely important to bring up again. There are three levels of influence. It is one to one. Hold on, we got some meeting problems here. Um, it's one to one, which is a transactional. Leveraged influence is one to many. And then perpetual influence is where it's all six profit channels. And as a fresh reminder, the six profit channels. P is for people, R is for resources, O is for opportunities, F is for funding, I is for information, and T is for technology. So transactional influence, that's what most people spend their time doing. They're always looking to just get that next sell, that next gig. And that's fine. That's how you produce money. But it's not truly how you have an influence. And it's not how you network. You're going to always have to have that next one, that next one, that next one. But a leveraged influence is where you have one on many. So when I'm speaking to Renatus and I'm in the front of the stage, I have an influence of two, three, four hundred people. That is a one on many. When Christian is on YouTube and he's got a video that's got 25 million views, it's one on many. Now he could have, uh, he could be doing a play and there'd be might be one on one or one on you know 10 people in the audience. But on YouTube, it's one on 25 million. And he's, uh, Christian, what is your highest video do you think? Is it Fruit Ninja at 27 million? Yeah, for Ninja, 27 million. High school dance battles about to surpass that, though. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. The third one is perpetual influence, where you go deep in relationships, where you understand people. You access all six profit channels, people, resources, opportunity, funding, information, technology. And I'm going to show you how to create those types of relationships because, to be honest, those are the relationships that make you the most money. I have a dear friend of mine named Lance Conrad. He's a network marketer in another company, very successful. I have made off of Lance probably seventy dollars to $75,000 in the last two years, and I have never done any business with Lance. Just by introductions and referrals from him, I have made $75,000. He, on the other hand, has also probably made six digits from the referrals I have given him. Just the other day, he, he and I sat down, we had lunch, and he was going to his next level, which was Diamond in his company, and he said, what do you, I need three people who can help me um, sign up for my company. This was on right before Halloween. And I said, no problem, I'll sign up, I'll sign my wife up, my mom up. And you have to give your social security number, your phone number, all those things. And he's and I put it on my credit card and he's gonna reimburse me. And I said, you know what, Lance, I'm grateful that you asked me because I know how intimidating it must have been for you to ask me. And his face went white. He knew I knew how hard it was for him to come to me and ask for me to sign up on his company just for you know 48 hours so he can get credit. I said, if you don't hit your goal, call me tomorrow, being Halloween, and I'll help you find additional people. So at 7 o'clock, he calls me up and he said, Woody, I'm three short. Can you help me? So here I am trick-or-treating with my family, texting everybody I know, saying, hey, will you sign up? I'll pay for it. It's on my credit card. I just need your social. I need your phone number. I need your birthday. You know, a lot of people think, this is kind of a scam, isn't it? This is, what, this is like a straw bar. What's going on? And I said, no, you know who I am. You know I wouldn't ask if I didn't have a friend in need. So instantly, people started texting me back, here's my social, here's my phone number, here's my birth date and address. And within probably less than an hour, we got him to the top level of his, of his company. Now, once again, there was no direct benefit to me. On a perpetual influence, it's not direct. It is indirect. So if someone needs something from me, I then will give it to them, and it's not like they're buying from me. So he needed access to my audience. He needed influence that I had. I then called my people, they signed up for his company, and he made Diamond. Now here's what happened. About two days after that, 
I was going to go meet, to meet with a CEO of another company, and I knew that Lance knew him. So I called Lance. I said, tell me what you know about this gentleman, and would you mind calling and giving me a, a validation? And he said, absolutely. He was honored to because I just helped him save his company. So this new CEO loved Money Mastery. I want to create Money Mastery for his company, take it through their organization. It would generate, on average, no less than twenty-five to potentially $50,000 a month for me, and that all came through Lance. That's what a perpetual influence is, where you have a relationship with someone that you can tap into their network and benefit from them. Going back to leverage influence, you guys have all seen the Segway, the two-wheeled device where you stand on and you move around. That was invented by a guy named Dean Kamen. He came up with another invention to purify water on any continent in any environment. And what most people are doing are, is what they did back in the 1800s and early 1900s where when they invented the telephone line, they put up these telephone poles all across the country. So to purify water in Africa and Indonesia and all these places, they're trying to create these water lines. And Dean's whole idea was, wait a minute, we're in the technology age. Why would we do pipelines the same way they did um, phone lines 100 years ago? Now we have cell phones. Let's bypass that process. So he invented this simple device that could take any water, and I mean any type of water, and purify it to medical grade water. And it's about the size of a mini refrigerator. So he went to the United Nations. He went to all these places and everyone said, nope, we can't help you. We don't know. We don't have people on the ground. That was his big problem. He needed influence. He needed a network with somebody who could get their product into all these little villages. And then he thought of the Coca-Cola company. And he said, gosh, you guys are in 266 countries, which is more than the countries that are in the United Nations. Will you help me get this purified water to all these villages? And they said, yes. And then they asked for a favor. Would you help us redesign and build a better soda fountain? Soda fountain hasn't changed in 80 years. It's all the same. And Dean said, sure, I'll help you. And if you've gone anywhere that has the new Coca-Cola freestyle machine, it's a big machine. It looks like a vending machine, but you put your drink in there, your cup in there. And you can pick any liquid you want. You can mix it and match it. That's Dean Kamen's invention, the freestyle machine he invented for Coca-Cola. So what did Coca-Cola do? They opened up their entire network, their entire distribution channel, so that he could get into 266 countries. He never could have gotten there on his own. That is the power of networking. Yes, you need transactional influence. You need the sales, the one-to-one. -one, but you also need a leveraged influence. And eventually, when you really want to grow your business, and you really want to be prominent in the world, you have to have a perpetual influence. So let's go on to, Christian, your life. Let's talk about your leveraged influence. I know you know Scott. I know you know a lot of people in Hollywood. Give us your story. How did you get into YouTube? How did you get into doing 110 million views on YouTube? And how has that changed your life through networking with different people? Yeah. Um, hi, everybody, by the way. Uh, you know, for me, everything started, I can pinpoint it to the day that I started theater back in junior high, so I don't want to age myself, but about 23 years ago, um, and ever since I knew exactly what I wanted to do, um, and so every every decision that I made, uh, starting to network, you know, really big time in, in college, um, even before I knew what the term was, I think we all network all the time, but, uh, you know, I, I, realizing that there was a term for it called networking. Um, I, you know, I started, as far as Scott's concerned, you know, Scott Wynn, uh, owning uh, a very successful YouTube channel, uh, who's now uh, also going into feature films as well, that we've got uh, three projects with three major studios <clears throat> underway right now, not including the picture that I'm also uh, writing and directing. But um, so Scott was a, a student at uh, BYU-Idaho with myself as well. I, we, we didn't know each other, but we knew of each other. Scott was a, little, a young filmmaker. I was a, a comedic actor, uh, helped start a, a, an improv troupe there, and Scott and his wife would go watch me perform all the time. Um, and back in 2012, skip a little ahead, back in 2012 I had just gotten back from New York City working with Lion King on Broadway, and I started a little film company, um, and I was directing my first feature. And my brother suggested I use Scott Wynn as my uh, director of photography, um, and so I did. I, I ended up using Scott, and while we were on set, we kind of realized that both of us had these skills that we, you know, wanted to tap into. Scott, of course, very talented uh, cinematographer, director as well, and, and writer, and then myself as a comedic actor, director, and writer. And uh, he started talking to me about uh, YouTube, which 
you know, if you guys are like me, uh, YouTube was just a way to get me through college, uh, watching uh, cat videos, funny cat <laughs> videos and things like that. But, uh, you know, I, uh, so Scott, you know, I was talking about how he wanted to start this YouTube channel, and at first it was just going to be slow motion, stuff in extreme slow motion. And I said, yeah, sure, I'd love to help you out with that. Let's let's do it, you know. And um, so one of the first videos we did was uh, uh, kittens in slow motion where we uh, took kittens. They had little capes on, and um, we had tossed them in front of a uh, – a camera lens, but let me let me let me be be very clear that, that when I say toss, literally they were like, uh, they just pass in front of the the camera lens, uh, and then landed in a very soft blanket, and then we huddled the kid. They were fine anyway, um, and it, and it went super viral. Well, it went pretty viral at the time for that, uh, and then we started doing these videos where, <clears throat> um, like Fruit Ninja was the first one that we did. Where we actually partnered with the company, uh, Hapbrick Studios, an Australian company who created the video game um, Fruit Ninja, and we partnered with them and created Fruit Ninja. And over Christmas vacation, it went super viral, and that's that's the video that put us on the map. And then we've been doing uh, big videos for major corporations ever since then. Of course, you know, not videos that that stand alone on themselves and don't feel like a commercial because you know your your modern uh, viewer, uh, consumer of of anything entertainment. If there's any hint of a commercial, it turned off. But um, anyway, that's that's how Scott and I uh, started to uh, work together. Perfect. Let me pause you right there. You've yeah. men you mentioned a couple of things that are very important that I want people to understand. When you started, you did multiple things from Lion King to the comedy troupe in Idaho. You you constantly as an entrepreneur keep developing yourself and your relationships i think a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck on the fact that oh i've got to do this one thing and it's got to work otherwise i'm a failure yeah. nothing can be further from a truth the entrepreneur is an individual who just keeps going all the time the other thing you talked about was when you and scott got together you used both of your skill sets to create something bigger and better in the end I think that's the other thing people miss. Like when you're networking, it's not transactional. You're not just trying to make money from that individual. You're trying to create greater value for both parties involved. So whenever you're networking, you got to make sure that the other person is getting equal or greater value than you are. So when you did the um, the Fruit Ninja video, the company that produced Fruit Ninja video, how far did their app go up in the iTunes store over that Christmas break? Uh, it it went from it was like down in the 100s, like like 150 in the app store it shot back up to the top 10 see that's a perfect example about networking other people have to benefit and that's how you can instantly ask yourself am i networking properly if the other person is not benefiting then no so when i networked with lance he benefited when he networked with me to introduce me to the ceo i benefited and that ceo benefited so other people have got to benefit so that's fantastic what other projects are you working on? Or let's go to the movie side. I mean, people are fascinated with movies. We all love movies. How did you get into Hollywood? How did you get discovered as well as how did you network your way into Hollywood? Yeah, so I uh, originally, you know, Hollywood's always been my goal, but um, I didn't quite know exactly how to get there. You know, long gone are the days where you could, you know, show up at an agent's door and, you know, and knock on their door and say, hey, you know, I'm an actor. Here's my resume and my uh, demo reel and things like that. You know, they're so inundated, so oversaturated. It's, it's incredibly oversaturated and incredibly uh, competitive environment. It's one of the most competitive environments I've ever, um, you know, been a part of. And uh, so I thought, you know, I'll just I'll start off doing YouTube. I'll utilize YouTube and I'll get paid for doing these videos, but I'll use it as – a way of getting my work out there, you know, it, out out seen in front of people, and if it if it gets a lot of views, which fortunately we were able to get a lot of views, then it hopefully will get in the right hands uh, or in front of the right eyes, uh, which it, it did, of course, you know, um, you know there was a couple managers that wanted to to manage myself, and and here's a great thing, uh, Woody helped me actually decide uh, who I wanted to manage me, and this was a huge decision. Uh, for me, and this is I wouldn't I know I wouldn't be right now where I am if I had gone the other route. But um, so these managers contacted me, uh, the Duffy brothers who own Ugly Brother Studios, 
Uh, they're the guys behind Mansers, Thousand Ways to Die, uh, Bar Rescue. They just had a show close on, I believe, ABC called Startup U. And uh, so they contacted me and said, hey, we dig your stuff. You know, check us out. We'd love to work with you. And and I, funny story, I actually didn't even take it that seriously because I thought that's oh, another it's another BYU student who started a little film company and they want to pay me with sandwiches. Um <laughs> So I thought, ah, I don't know, uh, that, you know, and and I actually let a couple of days lapse, and I I clicked on it, and then clicked on their website, and was like, oh my gosh, these guys are legit. So we had a meeting, and uh, I was so nervous. Uh, I called Woody up, and I said, hey, Woody, I don't know what to do here. Uh, you know, I'm I'm so scared. These guys are legit. You know, and um, you know, Woody said, <laughs> I'll never forget this. Uh, Woody, I'm sure you remember saying this, but. Um, uh, you said that you know you worked with everybody at every level, and everyone's a hot mess. And the key is to to own that. And I said, all right, I know I'm a hot mess. So, uh, <laughs> so I wrote that down on a sticky note, and I had this great meeting with uh, with uh, Tim and uh, Mike Duffy. And uh, they picked me up to manage me, and then from there, you know, we uh, I was able to get one of the best uh, entertainment attorneys in the industry, Jerry Langarzo, who was a senior vice president of uh, Disney. Uh, corporation and uh, and then my my now my agent uh, Jane Shulman who's fantastic. So from there, um, going into the feature film side of things, uh, now we've done the YouTube this and that and yada yada yada. Um, I had had a meeting with uh, Maker Studios, which is Disney's uh, digital branch, and had a meeting with them, and they were like, well, we, we you know we love your stuff, we wanted to meet with you because. Uh, you're not like all the other YouTubers. You don't. Uh, what's the word? Uh, you don't suck. Um, <laughs> that was their words, not mine. And um, <laughs> and I said, well, thanks. I'm a you know I'm I'm a traditionally trained actor, you know, and this and that. But um, so I had this meeting, and at the end of the meeting, um, the gentleman who was head of all programming at uh, Maker Studios, you know, he said, uh, you know, are there any are there any uh, projects that you want to get made? And I said. Uh, you know, actually, yeah, I, I just wrote this feature film, and I described it, and he said, I'm so interested. Can you make it for, you know, X amount of dollars? I said, oh, yeah, absolutely, and he said, all right, send it to me, and I said, yeah, let me tweak some things, uh, and then I'll send it to you. So I went I went back to the office and um, wrote the thing because I didn't even have a script. I was, uh, you know, I was making it all up as I went along, but uh, – Hold on, hold on, Chris. I'm going to pause you right there. That's one of my okay. favorite things because I've done that a thousand times. Every <laughs> entrepreneur I know who's ever had that leap for the brass ring, like I was really just gone for it, didn't have everything lined up. And I think that's the mistake that entrepreneurs make is they think, well, I've got to have the website. I've got to have the business card. i got to have all my marketing materials. No, a true entrepreneur is out there saying yes to everything, going 20 miles, 200 miles an hour and making it up as they go along. And that's exactly what you did. So kudos to you. Hey, thanks, Woody. Well, you know, and, and it all started. That's that's a that's a an improvisation uh, thing that we do. We, we you know we always say act now, think later, or or or, or speak and then let your mind catch up, kind of a thing. But um, yeah, I said, oh, I totally got a script. So I I went. And I took two weeks and I I wrote this full feature film and uh, a bunch of all nighters. Sent it off, uh, you know, to my managers. Tweaked it, rewrote it, sent it back, and then we finally got it off to Maker Studios. About a month later, after deliberating, they said, "You know, we love it. It's just, it's a little too, it's a little too uh, uh, action-packed and adulty from what, what we wanted. You know, um, it's 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 essentially Jaws meets Alien, but it's a comedy. Um, so anyway, so they passed on it, and I put the script down and and thought, well, that's it. And, and you know, one of the things is I, I realized that there's a lot of talk in Hollywood." And I decided that I wanted to start my own film company, and so I did. I started Monkey Shiny Media, and thought I'm going to produce my own my own stuff and really give myself an opportunity and network, you know, utilize all the network, uh, all the individuals uh, that I've come across and, and have worked with, and really leverage that, and you know, in part, le you know, allow them to leverage myself. Um, and I came down to the conclusion that I was going to. This was the film I was going to make, and. Uh, I uh, was actually in Virginia a couple weeks ago for my grandmother's funeral, and um, and I, I thought, you know, this is the film I'm going to do. You know, at the point I was like, I already had a, another script in mind. I had started to write it, uh, couldn't finish it. I just it didn't feel right, and thought, no, this is the one. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with this script that I had already written, and 
had a meeting in in Los Angeles, and a, an in, and a gentleman who I had met with and worked with before, uh, Travis Chambers, who is um, he has uh, socially marketed some of the biggest uh, pictures, a lot of Marvel features. He's done a lot for Fox Films, and, and I uh, called uh, Travis up and I said, "Look, I know your your skills with marketing." Uh, socially, and you know, I'm, I, I have this film company, and I told him the model of my company, and he uh, flipped out. Was like, "Oh my gosh, this is amazing!" Uh, you know, it's a great model. So I had him speak to my managers, my entire team, uh, and I just at least wanted him to get uh, get them fired up about the idea of doing a feature film, and, and he did. And by the end of that conversation, this is two Wednesdays ago, uh, my managers were like, "Great, great, let's do it. What's the next step?" So. Long story short, <laughs> that's uh, how uh, with with this um, with this feature film how it's how it's been made. So, well, thank you. I know that once again, I always just like to bring it back to entrepreneurship. So yeah. often we're going down a certain path, and we think this is it. You know, when Disney's calling you saying, "Hey, shoot us your movie," you're like, "Yeah." You work day and night, day and night. You give it to them, and they pass on it. Mm -hmm. It happens to every entrepreneur, especially even in the Renatus community, where you're networking, you're building relationships, and all of a sudden someone passes. But lo and behold, a couple of months, a couple of years later, they come back and your dream becomes reality. You meet with this guy. You talk about his success. You create a value for him, for him because he's in marketing. You've got a movie production that you want to do. And together, you can create something bigger together that you can't apart. And that's what networking is all about. So awesome. I'm proud of you, man. Congrats. Thanks, Tell me about um, oh, uh, Tony Horta. How would you get with him? <laughs> um, so Tony Horton was um... – I had a company that I worked with before uh, in um, – based out of – they had two offices, uh, Provo and, and uh, L.A. They were doing a um, – they wanted to, to kind of get – well, two things. Uh, Tony wanted to kind of change his image up a little bit. He wanted to, to show that he's – you know, I mean he, he is goofy when he, when he works out, but he, he wanted to kind of show that he is uh, multifaceted, not just a, a workout guru. Uh, so he paired up with his company, and his company, of course, was looking for – Somebody as famous as you know Tony Horton was, or is, and uh, to create th these uh, videos uh, to kind of change the image of Tony Horton, get things out there. This guy is is a funny actor, and so they came up with this idea. Uh, the company was called uh, Contagious, uh, and so we shot. You know, they flew me out to L.A. We shot a bunch of videos, including a TV. Um, <clears throat> What we call what we call a uh, oh it's a it's not a, it's not quite a a, a pilot I can't the, the words uh, escaping my mind but it's a, essentially it's a little you know three to five minute teaser of what a what a TV show would look like um, and so that's kind of how Tony and I started to work together and then uh, you know, right now we've got a TV series that's being pitched around uh, L A and for those who aren't familiar with Tony Horton tell them who he is and what what infomercials he's done. Oh, Tony Horton is the P90X guy. He's that goofy guy who's always, uh, you know, he's that uh, older gentleman, super ripped, and he's, uh, you know, always doing the workout stuff. P90X, and uh, I, th I think he's done a couple other ones, but P90X is what he's really uh, well known for. And here's another point I want to bring up. If you are, if anyone is online, they're seeing the picture of Christian Busey, and this is nothing against my buddy Christian, but if you compare P90X, Mr. Macho, to Christian, they don't go hand in hand. And this is where Christian thrives is he's okay with who he is. He's okay. When you network, you got to be okay with who you are. You can't live in this world that you think you're perfect because then you'll never be able to play with anybody else. And Christian is a hot mess. I'm a hot mess. And that Christian, I've shared this with you in the past where on, at my seminars, I always talk about you. I want everyone to know they're a hot mess and it's okay. The second you accept that you're a hot mess, boom, you're ready to rock and roll. So let's There's go. So much into, that. Thank you for your comments. Let's go into the notes of the Money Mastery Mastermind, where we can really go into masterminding together on this call. If any of you have any questions for Christian directly, we'll just take five minutes right now. Ask your questions for Christian. Text me at 951-978-3408. So 951-973-3408. That's my number. Text me or call me. Not Don't call me. Text me. And because uh, I want to answer, text me and uh, I'll ask que uh, questions for Christian and then we'll get into the masterminding side. So if any of you have any specific questions for Christian, 
text me at 951-973-3408. And then we'll get into the networking. So as I'm waiting for some questions to come in, uh, what new projects do you have coming up? Tell me some more about your networking. How do you like to network? What tricks of the trade do you use to network? Oh, this question for me, Woody? Yeah. Yeah, it's um, for me, it is, of course, knowing what, what value that I add. I was thinking about this earlier today. You know, it, it's funny how um, we have no, no problem going to a grocery store, going to a, a gas station. And let's say I'm going to buy gasoline, so I, I buy gasoline, and that, that uh, kind of somewhere, a network exchange just happened as far as, you know, I needed gasoline, that value was there, so I, I purchased gasoline. The individual who sold me the gasoline needed money or wants money, and so I gave them my money to, in, uh, to get gasoline. And it's, so, it's such an objective exchange, you know, when we do that. And I think the problem and one of the fears that I used to have is that, you know, the what I have, the skill set that I have uh, maybe is not – as objective as as a dollar, a dollar is a dollar. But you know, what is it that I have to you know offer, uh, and is it uh, a value? And I, I think one, once I figured out that yes, you know, I, I I'm a I'm a film nerd. I mean, I, I watch movies all the time. I, I read books about the industry constantly. Things that would bore people to death. Uh, you know, I, I love watching numbers, uh, looking at budgets for films and, and things like that. So for me. Realizing that I had a, an absolute value to give uh, other people um, it made me much more confident in, in in networking and saying, "Okay, great, I would love to work with you because you have you have a skill set that I would love to utilize uh, or leverage." And then here, this is what I have to offer, and I, so I think that's if that made sense. You know, it, it's really. Uh, Getting over that hot mess, accepting that you're a hot mess, but also realizing that you do have value, um, and whatever that value is, and utilizing that value and putting that, putting putting that out there. Okay, that's a very important thing because this is, I think, the number one reason why people don't network is they don't feel like they have any value. So you work in an industry where rejection is constant. So yeah. how did you identify that hot mess? How did you identify and accept that you have value? Um. You know, it's interesting because despite the fact that you constantly have these positive reinforcements going on with views and big Hollywood people going, you're something, kid, you know, that kind of a, a thing, it's hard to believe that when it's yourself. Um, for me, it was having to actually, like, consciously take a step back and, and, and put – and I had to put value on myself and not rely so much on what other people were saying because I quickly realized that a lot of people like to you know, uh, blow smoke um, in this industry. Um, and so I had to realize for myself I had to – I actually sat down and I listed all the things that I personally had to offer. You know, what talents do I have? Um, you know, what do I have to offer as far as even my network? You know, the, the individuals that I work with that other people could also leverage as well. Okay, that right there is how you create perpetual influence. Not only networking with the people you are networking with to create value for you, but how to network with the people in your network to create value for other people. So I remember one time when you and I were coaching at a um, restaurant and you were telling me about the new movie business you want to do. And I said, oh my gosh, I absolutely have the perfect person you need to meet, Levi McPherson. And I called Levi oh, yeah. up and said, Levi, race down to this meeting. Christian's in town for 24 hours. I want you to, to meet him. And then together, you two created a new business. And I think within the – if I remember correctly, these numbers, correct me if I'm wrong. I think literally within the first, like, two weeks, you guys got a contract for 30 grand or 60 grand? It wasn't even, it wasn't even two weeks. We hadn't even – and then here's the thing. It, I think it was four days, four or five days. It yeah. was less than a week, I believe, that, that we got our first contract, our first uh, – for $30,000, yeah, with a, with, a, with a company to create a couple of videos. So here's a, a question I got, two of them. Let me go back to the first one. Yeah. What was the one – oh, let me – I'm sorry. Let me go back. I want to reiterate. So I didn't gain any physical value by networking you and Levi together in that moment other than I increased, increased my value to you and I increased my value to Levi. 
then you two guys go out and you create new value, monetary value as well. You make money generating sales and so forth, and you guys have continued to do so. But what it does for me, and the reason I'm being transparent here and I want people to see is, the reason I do those things is my entire business is built by networking. I don't have any social media. I don't have any um, advertising that I do. It's all by connecting people. So when I have an event like Money Mastery, I'm able to call you. You're able to come on. You're willing to come on. I'm, Levi's going to be on next week. All of those awesome. things happen because I created value for others first. So what you've done is you've created value for Scott Wynn, for Tony Horton, for all these people first. So that it's kind of like a bank account, a relationship account. You put deposits into those accounts first, then you can make withdrawals. Mm -hmm. I just want to, I want to clarify that. So here's one of the questions. What was the one thing that made all the difference? The one piece of advice that made it the difference? The one piece of advice. Um, I, well, I, I'll, I'll say this going back, um, and not just because, not just because, you know, Woody's here, uh, but but truly, I think the one piece of advice, and for some reason for me it was the most freeing advice that Woody gave me was that, again, you know we're all hot messes. For, for some reason that that gave me permission to that it's okay to mess up. It's it, you know it's okay to not be perfect. It's okay to, you know, um, whatever it was, and it it was the most freeing thing. And so I think. And dealing with rejection constantly, and I think realizing, you know, that that also helped me with uh, dealing with rejection, which in this in industry, as is, is Woody said, uh, is I mean, it's almost daily, you know, hearing the word no and, and dealing with 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 that. But um, realizing that it's okay, you know, and yeah, it's just that's probably been the, the biggest uh, thing for me is is that freeing advice of that you're a hot mess and it's okay because everyone's a hot mess. We are, and even on today's call, for those of you who are listening to this later, we had a 15-minute problem. You know, I couldn't get on. My computer was frozen up. The software wasn't working properly. Um, and then when I got everyone on, I texted Christian privately. I, I'm like, why are you back on the call? And he's like, you haven't emailed me. I'm like, oh, yeah, right. I emailed everybody else to be on the call, but not Christian. We're all a hot mess. We all make problems. We all have challenges, and it's not a big deal. If you live your life like you're okay with being who you are, other people will be okay with who you are as well. Another question here, Christian, what if you're not in a place to network like you did? You were blessed to know the right people. Now, I want to address this question. I think this question is totally false, and I'm not attacking the person who sent it, but I think this is the number one problem people think about, that other people have it easier than them, that other people are in the right place. And looking at your life, you were at college meeting another kid. Neither one of you at that moment with Scott, neither one of you at that moment knew that someday down the road you were going to be these huge people on YouTube. In fact, when you were in college, was, e, was YouTube even alive? Yeah, you know, when I was in college, uh, the, first, the first half of my college uh, career, uh, there, was, there was no YouTube. Um, and I didn't even know who Scott was. I, I mean, I knew who he was, but I didn't know Scott. And I think that's one of the one of the important things is is that you know I, you know love him or hate him, but uh, Alec Baldwin once said you know I I've learned that in this industry you never know who is going to uh, you know break out and become successful. So I I'm nice to everybody, um, and I think that's so important is is especially in that embryonic. Um, is that the right word? Yeah, yeah. you know, of college, uh, where you're all developing your skill set, and uh, we're all nobodies in college, as far as you know, our careers are concerned. Um, you know, but 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 networking there in Idaho, Rexburg, Idaho, um, and now there's those of us who have gone on that we've you know networked quote you know before um, leaving you know a dear friend of mine is now writing for uh, Nickelodeon you know Scott's of course you know working on some huge projects and uh, there's a couple other people uh, who who you know from BYU Idaho that I that I knew who've gone on so I think there's always that that opportunity if if there are people around you I think what happens is the pre label of Networking. I mean, that's um, 
always existed networking, but I think once we label it, you know, it feels official and this and that, but I think we're constantly networking. I think we are too. And that's where I think people make the mistake is they think, well, gosh, they knew so-and-so and and they knew so-and-so and and that person knew so-and-so. Well, until you get out there, you won't know anybody. And the fastest way to get out there and networking is by creating value for other people first. If you are alive and you have air in your lungs, you have the right and the ability to create value for other people. So on our notes today, we have five questions, five ways to begin networking. The first one is, what can you do to create value for someone else? And this is where I'm going to turn it over to our audience for you guys to text in answers to me. So text me at 951-973-3408, ways that you can create value for other people. Now, I've listed two to get us started, and Christian, I want you to think of some and interject. But the fastest way to create value for someone else is to solve a problem for them. Another way to create value for someone else is to make an introduction. We all need to know other people we don't know. So for you, Christian, what can yeah. you do to create value for someone? Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is to become an expert in my field um, so that I have that that added knowledge and that added everything, you know, that they can leverage, you know. So becoming an expert, I think. Perfect. For everyone else, we'll take a couple minutes. Go ahead and start texting me in solutions that you have on ways that you can create value for someone else. And as always, this is a mastermind group, so please just openly and freely say it. Just get it out there. Let's talk about it. Let's work it out. What are some other ways, as we're waiting for these texts to come in, what are some other ways that you know to create value for other people? Mm-hmm. Not to put you on the spot, but you're a brilliant. <laughs> Use your improv skills, my friend. Exactly. <laughs> um, by creating value for other people, uh, aside from becoming, the ex- becoming an expert, um, I, I, you know, putting yourself out there, um, I think, you know, I, I, becoming an expert, you know, looking at yourself as though you are uh, objectively, you know, you're, you're, you are, you know, you've got all this knowledge, you've got all these connections, you've got all these things. Uh, but unless you put your, yourself out there, it's, it's like having the most beautiful or lavish hotel. Uh, and I, and I put it, I put that, I build that hotel out in the middle of the desert, you know, in this, in this oasis. But if I don't have street signs and I don't have roads, how's anybody going to know? where to go. And I think, so I think adding, at least the introduction of adding value uh, to someone else is, is putting yourself out there, um, if that makes sense. Absolutely. A couple of texts that we had that came in, one was serving, another one is do an unexpected favor. Uh, you mentioned putting yourself out there. This, I think, is the one that I use the most, is ask them what they need. That creates value for you instantly because I can't solve someone's problem if I don't know what they need. I can't create value for them if I don't know what they need. So I have a relationship with John Lee Dumas, who is owns uh, entrepreneuronfire.com, one of the top podcasts for entrepreneurs in the world. He and I have known each other for years. We've done a couple book projects together. And I didn't know him other than that someone introduced me to him and said, hey, what do you, you should be on his, on his show. So I was on his show, but then I thought, here's a guy going somewhere. I want to stay in contact with him and I want to create more value for him. So I got him published in Forbes. I introduced him to probably 30 or 40 other speakers, authors, trainers. And then just the other day, I had this thought, I need to have Will Smith be on John Dumas's show because Will Smith has a new movie coming out at Christmas called Concussion. And his last couple of movies have been up and down. I thought, you know what? Will needs audiences just as much as anyone else does, even though he's you know, a world famous actor. I know his secretary. I've met Will. I've, I've done a training with him one time. And I'm reaching out right now to his uh, assistant say, hey, do you want to be on this podcast that has an audience of a million people to promote his movie? Now, that's good for Will. Now, it's extremely good for John because now that promotes John's business as, hey, you've had a you know number one entrepreneur and business or uh, film star on your podcast, increases his validation. Then in the future, if I want to do a project with um, John, which I have in the works already, it increases, increases, increases my value with him. So this is so important to ask people what they need and start connecting other people together. Networking is not just all about you. In fact, it's never about you. It's always about the other person. 
So I've got some awesome answers here. I'm going to um, just read these off, and I'll type these in later and send them out to everyone. Authentic praise and gratitude. Share pieces of your knowledge knowledge that could help them. Let them know about self decoration. Uh, I'm sorry, self decorated retirement plans. Help them with a problem. And it's okay to mess up. Become the hub to connect those with questions with the, with those worth answers. This is the exact way I was just talking about. Reach out and uh, research and find out their needs and meet one of them. You don't have to solve everyone's problem. Just solve a couple of their problems and they'll always appreciate you. My husband helped a friend pour a driveway, lay some sod so he could finish his house and get out of the market. So if this person's husband went to that friend after they sold their house and said, hey, I'm going to sell my house. Will you help me lay my sod? That guy's going to be there in a heartbeat. It's just law of reciprocity. Giving, creating value, people will give back. The great thing about making introductions is it's third-party validation. So when Lance Conrad introduced me to the CEO of this other company that I wanted to get to know, I automatically walk into that appointment with more validation than had I walked in by myself. So always make introductions for other people. Always believe in yourself. That always creates value for the people. Stand up, be bright. Bring them the greatest skills that they need. I say this on every call, be a product of the product. Know your product so that you can create value for other people. All right, fantastic. I will go ahead and type those up and send those out to everyone later. Let's go on to the second one. Where and how can we branch out? So what kind of clubs can we join? So I made one real simple, the Rotary. Christian, in the space that you're in, are you, do you belong to any networking groups? And if not, no problem. Just curious. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, well, you know, just my managers and, and my agent. And my manager managers are uh, essentially my um, Rolodex. And so they, they are a hub to me, you know, which is somebody mentioned a hub, and, and I love that. Because I love, I love being able to, also. Oh, I can't offer that, but I know somebody that can. Yeah. You know, but, but, um, yeah. I, you know, just, just my managers and agents, I, I think, is um, huge networks there. That like brings up a good point. I think we should all take on the view that we are agents for our friends. So if I look at my Rolodex, I am an agent to everyone that I meet to introduce them to my Rolodex. The way that your agent introduces you to everyone that they meet. To better your business. So for those of you who are playing along at home, and I'm grateful you are, start texting me what clubs you can join. Think of the clubs in your area. You got the Rotary, you got the Entrepreneur Club. Uh, another one that I love is charities. Charities are a fantastic place to network. When I first moved to Utah and I knew nobody, I found a company or a charity that I was impressed by. I started working with them. They asked me to sit on their board. The great thing when working with charities they always have donors. Well, donors are wealthy. And so if you want to deal with wealthy people, deal in charities. Then I met Gary and Lisa Price, and now I sit on their advisory board for their charity, for the statute of responsibility. Now I've traveled around the world with those two, sharing the statute of responsibility, meeting incredible people. That is how you network. So what are some other ways to branch out that you guys are interested in or that you've heard that works? As you've traveled around, Christian, are there any clubs that are unique that you've come across that you find interesting? Yeah, there's um, clubs such as uh, improvisation troops that you can actually take classes with, and it's a great way to, to network with the instructors who have who know people in the industry, but also um, the other people who you're in the class with. Um, so. You know, I guess it's not a, I guess not a traditional club, but a, a club indeed. As far as you know, there's a group of people who are there for a cause or for a reason. Um, but a great place to, to network is those improvisational places like Groundlings, um, the Upright Citizen Brigade. Yeah, others like that. 
Well, that triggered an idea for me, um, college courses. So you're basically taking a class to educate yourself. Years yes. years ago, I took a woodshop class. I didn't even have kids. This is probably 20 years ago. I thought, I want to learn to build a chessboard. So I took a woodshop class. But I met a lot of great people. And so anytime you're out there in the public, you're meeting the people you need to meet. So thank you guys. Uh, some of my other answers were chamber of commerce, church groups, clubs with specific hobbies. The NAWBO, which is the National Association of Women Business Owners. So I'm sure there's one for men as well. So the NAWBO. I was say Woody Church is a big one there. Yep. Got some more coming in. Real estate investing clubs. That's good for on for Renatus because they're all into real estate. Book clubs. That's a fantastic one because you can get them to read books that you're interested in as well as knowing what they want to solve. All right. Looks like we'll stop on that right there. Let's go on to the third question out of five. How do you differentiate yourself? What are your strengths? How, and this kind of goes back to the hot mess, accepting that you're a hot mess. But when you look at your skill set, Christian, you've added to it year after year. What do you do to differentiate yourself? Um, a lot of it is, uh, you know, for me, it's, it's looking out there, what are the current trends, what are this and that, but also, you know, looking at, for myself, um, you know, something that was once uh, what got me into uh, a lot of fights and bullied as a kid uh, has become a, a, a strong thing for me. Uh, that is my physicality. So so really working on my physicality, um, you know, being a big guy but also having the grace of a ballerina um, <laughs> is something that I've really, you know, worked very hard on uh, to, to stand out, to – you know, to, to break that mold that, uh, you know, and, and yeah. I like that because I have, I mean, we've filmed together a half dozen times. I've watched you work countless times and you are very physical. Like for those of you, I'll have to send a, um, a video clip. One time I was doing this marketing message for another network marketing company called Monavi and Mint. And uh, I hired Christian to come and he came in a split notice. It was so fantastic because we'd already worked together. And he literally let me drag him behind a Jeep on a snowy ground. And I thought, wow. oh, let's put a slide underneath him so it'll, you won't be able to see it with his jacket. The slide ripped out, and he literally hung on. And I dragged him across rock and snow and ice for a quarter mile, and he just hung on. So when he talks about his physicality, it really is true that he has honed that ability to be physical on camera. If you've seen um, – and I've already seen the video, the video clips, but the dance off of the high school or Fruit Ninja, he's a very physical actor and he's hysterical, but he's worked on it. So I think that's how you differentiate yourself is work on it. Yeah, thanks, Woody. Yeah, I, you know, and really quickly just interject as well is, is I, for me, one of the one of the biggest comments, because Chris Farley is, uh, of course, uh, a, a big influence in myself, <laughs> not in his personal life, but uh, on screen. Um, and you know, I co-creating a TV series right now with uh, 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 with uh, oh my gosh, my mind just went blank. No problem. Uh, okay. Fairly uh, with uh, Bob Fairly, um, and he and his brother are the ones that uh, uh, wrote and directed Dumb and Dumber. There's something about Mary. You know, a bunch of some of my favorite comedies of all time. And uh, you know. Bob said, uh, you know, man, you've got a lot of Chris Farley in you. And I thought that was, that, was, that was a big compliment for me. Yep. Somebody wrote back, Grace of a Ballerina. That's funny. <laughs> they like it. I think it – and once again, I, and I wish you guys could literally be on set with Christian or just be around him. He is a hot mess. And, and Christian, you know I mean that in the highest respect. Well, totally. But they, he doesn't try to fake it. In business, too many people are faking it all the time. He accepts who he is, and he just does it 100%. So when I accepted that I was a hot mess, and I knew that I couldn't read, and I knew that I was stupid, and I had the GPA to prove that I was stupid, I hired a coach to teach me how to read. I learned to read when I was 19 years old. I now have written over 13 books. I've written over 100 mini biographies. I create Money Mastery, which is a script every single day. I you know, have produced movies, infomercials. All that happened the day that I accepted 
that I was a hot mess. So the way you differentiate yourself is accept your weaknesses and make them strong and accept your strengths and build upon them. So Christian, you know I love you. You're just fantastic and you're such an inspiration. Thanks, Wade. You are too. Well, thank you. <laughs> Here's a couple other ones. Listen first. Listen. This is how you differentiate yourself. Listen first. Ask good questions. Then listen carefully as to what people's needs and desires actually are. Love that one. That's fantastic. So I'm just going to write here, listen, ask good questions, and then solve problems. All right, let's go on to the, the fourth one, follow-up. Best ways to follow up. This, to me, is the secret to networking. As you look back on your career, when you have a, an appointment with a big producer or a studio, how often do you follow up? And how do you follow up? What's the best way to follow up? You know, usually I'll show up on their doorstep or I'll write them every hour. <laughs> not getting, um, uh, you know, the best thing is, for me, it's, it's the, it, this is where patience comes in. I'm not a very patient person. But, but the follow-up for me is, is, you know, immediately after a meeting, I'll send an email. Thank you so very much for your time. Um, and then, I'll, and then I'll just wait and, you know, see if they respond back. And then we start, you know, a, a two-way conversation from there. Or, you know, usually I give it uh, five, six days. If I haven't heard back, then I'll, you know, uh, usually about a week. And then, I'll, and then I'll, you know, say something, you know, just a little, hey, how you doing? You know, what are, you know, what's up <laughs> in, yeah. in a very diplomatic, nice way, you know. Yeah. Great. I'm just writing those down. I also find that when I'm following up, instead of following up to say, oh, have you made a decision? Are you ready to do business with me? I'll follow up with a gift where I'll send them a text. Hey, I was just thinking of you. Here's a great video I found on YouTube. I thought you'd like it. As long as they, you're on the front of their mind, that's all that matters with the follow up. Oh, yeah, that guy came and yeah. talked to me. Oh, yeah, that person has got this real estate deal. You don't have to follow up uh, with the sell per se as much as you need to follow up with kindness. So for those of you who have ideas to follow up, go ahead and text those into me now, 951-973-3408. That's 951-973-3408. What are some of the best ways people have followed up with you? What is, has someone sent you something? Did someone you know, give you a gift? What were some of the things that stood out in your mind? Um, go, what you, pretty much what you just said, Woody, uh, is I think the, the, the most unintrusive way for, for myself looking back when somebody just sends me a, hey, you know, check out this video, you know, this reminds me of you or, or in this hilarious or whatever it is, you know, or a meme or, a, you know, uh, a news article, any you know, something like that, just a simple text or, or whatever. That's always, I think, the most uh, for myself. Going well, that's the most unintrusive way for that individual to continually, you know, be on the top of my mind. I go, oh, that's right, that's right. I've got this project coming up, and uh, oh, oh, I got to use this guy or this girl, you know. Yep, I've done that. I love it. It's I've had people give me a thank you card with a gift, you know, gift card in it. Here's twenty five dollars or fifty dollars, and I thought, wow, that's so nice of them. And literally in my ten year career, I may be, oh my gosh, my twenty year career of doing this, I may have only gotten ten in my life, so one every other year. So it's one of those things that it stands out. No one does it anymore. We send the text and the email, but when you send a handwritten thank you, and even if you add a gift card for their, you know, thank you for your time, that's powerful. Here's a good one I, I see right here. Follow up with a solution to one of their challenges. So you've met with somebody, they told you listened, you asked good questions, they told you a problem they're having. Follow up in a week with a solution to their problem. That is the absolute number one best way to follow up.
I'm putting that in exclamation marks. Number one way to network. That is my favorite way, and it's the way I've literally created all the revenue I've created. Great way is quotes and stories. Easy thing to do. Hey, I just read the story. I was thinking of you. Here's a great uh, experience somebody had. I've been persistent with fun jokes on a regular basis to lighten this huge business guy's day. He's gotten me an appointment. He's told me I was number 15 on his list, and now he, we're meeting next week. Perfect example. It costs you nothing to send a text, a quote, an email. Make it humorous. The shortest distance between two people is comedy, So, and YouTube is full of it. You know, just type in Christian Busey's name, and you'll find tons of videos. Just send them Christian's videos. That's that's how you follow up. Just send them all of Christian's videos. <laughs> all right, let's go on to the last one. Be concise. Know what you want. How often? This is actually a perfect question for you. I'm so glad you're on this call. How hmm. often do people in Hollywood make the mistake when they go in for the pitch and they don't know how to tell their story? Ooh, that happens all the time. They either overkill it or underkill it, um, you know. And and again, it's about being precise. You know, we have a one-liner. You know, you always have to have your one-liner when you're pitching uh, pitching something. I can tell you the the entire basic synopsis in in a one line. You know. Can you, hey, will you do that for me? Give me your one line for your newest movie. Uh oh gosh. <laughs> I'll give you I'll give you one for the TV series that uh, that I'm working on with. Not Bob Fairley, but uh, P. Fairley, by the way. Let me let me um, make an addendum to that. So he, he, here is because I think that this is I'm super excited for this one. So this is the one-liner for this uh, uh, TV series that uh, P. Fairley, Jack Vale, and myself are working on. Uh, two idiots accidentally find themselves cult leaders through a social media misunderstanding. <laughs> <laughs> And that's all you know, Woody. And what did you just do? You just laughed. And then oh everyone I tell that to, they do the exact same thing. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, I get it. That's hilarious. <laughs> okay, I want, I want in on that one. I want to watch that one. <laughs> I want to be there for that one. A total awesome. misunderstanding. Becoming a cult leader through a social misunderstanding. That's that's classic. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, and, and and yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, Sorry. no, go ahead. I just say, you know, it's it's about being precise, knowing exactly what what the basic synopsis uh, is for the film, and being precise with your words. So, for those of you playing at home, which you all are, and I love it, tell me how do you decide how to be precise and conscious, concise? How do you what do you do to be concise? And I think the the way to do it is a one liner. We also call it the elevator pitch. Oh yeah. to know exactly what you want. You know, you've told me about a lot of your movies. The, the one that you're doing right now that I'm trying to help you scout a location on is the one that the cross between Alien and Jaws. Yeah. You know, that one line is like, okay, I've seen Jaws, I've seen Alien, okay, I understand where he's going with it. <laughs> yeah. So, that should be a fun one. Yeah, and, and I think the key is to narrow it down to just one point. Because the point totally. of being the point of being concise is you want them to ask a follow-up question. So when I am on stage or when I'm doing my elevator pitch, this is the one I used to use when I was promoting my book called Millionaire Dropouts. I dropped out of high school at 16, I was a millionaire at 26, and broke at 27. Now they see my age now, and they know I'm no longer 27, they always ask, what happened next? How did you get out of that? What did you do? So when you're concise, when you're networking, you that will, if you do it properly, that will encourage them to ask you additional questions. So what I'm going to do is we're, we're going way over on our time due to the fact that we had Christian on the call, which was fantastic, worth every second. As you guys text in ways to be concise, I will add that. Christian, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart again. You are such a, a blessing in my life, my dear, dear friend. Is there any last advice you would have for everybody as these as entrepreneurs to follow their dream to go for their goals? Um, you know, going along with this, the, the, the continual theme here, I think uh, that we've, what we've pinged on a couple times here is, 
is uh, never give up. <laughs> you know, rejection is a, is a normal thing. It's not unique to any anything, and and just just keep on going. Stick, know what you want, and keep going for it. Uh, I appreciate it, my friend. Thank you so very much. Once again, everyone, thanks for being on the call. I'll send this recording out immediately. Thank you. And we will talk next week. Take care.